I'm going to be covering a technique that I'm now going to start to use all the time for creating stock that is a specific size that I need more precisely and easier than I have in the past using the capabilities of a CNC machine. Welcome to another episode. So back here I have a mold that I'm working on and there are two pieces that are kind of an odd size. They're about a quarter of an inch thick and this one is about one inches in this direction, three inches in the other direction. This one is about two inches. They're not exactly that and so one of the things that I did in the past is I would mill the top, I'd mill the bottom, I'd mill the ends, and I'd mill the sides to try to get things the correct dimensions. And in having a, a messaging back and forth between me and Peyton at Brick Tactical, I suddenly realized something that he's been doing and what, why it made sense. And that's what I'm going to show you here. It's a much easier way to get precise stock. The only downside is that it wastes material. Uh, but one of the things that I've come to realize is the, the amount of time that it takes me to do all of the truing up of the stock and getting it the right size is a lot of time and effort. And letting the machine do it and wasting a little bit of material is a far more efficient use of my time and you know time is money when I'm doing projects for other people. So I'm going to show you the technique and as I say this is going to be my go-to technique going forward and I'm kind of amazed that it took me this long to realize the usefulness of this approach and how much easier it is. The idea is simple enough which is you take a piece of material that's thicker than what you need for the final part, pick up one corner of it and then mill essentially five of the six sides in one operation. So here I can mill the top, the left, the right, the front and the back sides and mill all of the details of those five sides in one operation. Once that's all done, then what I can do is flip it over and mill the other side. And that's a lot less work than the way I was doing it before, where I was milling all six sides in six, six operations and then putting it back in the vise and milling the top and the bottom. That was really a lot of work. So I uh, didn't think that through. Uh, I was going to uh, flip this over and then realized that I milled the lip away from this side, which means that I don't, this cannot rest on the, the top here. So what I'm going to need to do is, is change the orientation and mill it that way. And for the second one, which is smaller, I'm going to change the order of the operation. So I do this side second. Uh, in other words, do the back first and then this side, and that will work much better. After thinking about it some more, I decided to take a different approach, which is to treat the first two operations as milling the stock to size, so that I would effectively get precision stock that would be the correct in all dimensions except for the thickness. So here I was milling five of the six surfaces for this part, and then I would uh, do that on the other part, which is a little bit smaller. This is the two parts with the five sides milled to the correct dimensions, except as I say for the thickness, and ready to have the hat milled off. So once that was done, I could flip them over and mill off the hat. And at this point, I had the two pieces of stock that were the exact dimensions I needed, except for the thickness. These are my two precision, quote unquote, pieces of stock that are in the correct dimensions, except for thickness. Uh, and so they're ready to go back into the machine to have the details added and the final thickness set. I can now put these two precision blanks into the vise next to each other and mill them together like I did in the previous episode by picking up one edge, uh, then first surfacing it so that I get um, a nice 
finish on the top and then putting in the details. Doing it this way gives me precise alignment of the details between the two halves, uh, which happens to be important for this. Uh, again, these are inserts in a mold and this is similar to what I did before. And I'll put a card up above to that episode where I did that. Once this is done, I flip them over as a combination and I want to make sure I keep them in the same orientation. Put them back in the, to the vise and tighten it. And then I'm going to want to pick up the, the left and the back corners again. I'm using piranha jaws that have teeth, so depending on how hard I clamp this in, the Y could change a little bit, which is why I have to measure it again. The two inserts have a perfect fit with perfect alignment between the two inserts, so I'm very happy with that. I also did another mold, which I can't show you, where I milled the entire mold from one side, and then here is a photo of taking the hat off the back. And as you can see, it produced an awful lot of chips from taking the hat off. You can see from the last photo that you get a lot of waste from this. Now, in this particular case, I was using one inch thick material for the last photo when the target was half an inch. And so I could be much more efficient by it, the usage of this by using material that's a little bit thicker than half an inch like, uh, between, let's see, I always have a problem, five-eighths of an inch to uh, three-quarters of an inch. I really like metric because you can just say 0 0.5, 0 0.75, etc. Anyway, so if I had stock, raw stock, that was closer to the final dimension, then it would be a lot less waste. Even so, the amount of time that it saves me at the machine is huge, and so... I'm definitely going to start ordering stock thicker than I need and using this approach for pretty much everything that I do moving forward because it's just so much easier than chewing up all of the, the different surfaces. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, comment below, and I'll see you next time.